this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my Sony A7S III rig and a few reasons why I kit it out as such. And hopefully you find inspiration from this. A few things first, I wanna thank Condor Blue for sending out some of these components. That's been central to the heart of this rig. I really enjoy Condor Blue products and maybe you'll see why I like them later on in the video. So first of all, why kit out a little mirrorless camera like this? Well, for those who you don't know, at my day job, I work with the Sony FS7, which is a much larger Sony camera. I like the style of that shooting with the top handle and it has enough heft that makes handheld really smooth and just really ergonomic from a solo shooter's perspective. So I want to try to emulate that with a small body uh, because I already own the Sony A7S III, but there are some perks with going something like this. Number one, it's still smaller camera, so you can do photography with it. You can take this out of the camera cage pretty simply and you can put on a gimbal. You have better autofocusing controls. So there are some advantages with going something like this. Before I get into it, let's dive in and I'll show you how I assembled it and why. So let's go back to the studio. All right, so we're going to build our camera cage. The first thing I did is install that little quick release plate that comes with your A7S III cage from Condor Blue. So that just fits right here. And then it's quickly and easily just drops into place. You push up right up like it's there and clamp it down. So right here on the corner, there is a little hole that fits through the camera strap that you can attach a screw directly into the cage, which I'm going to be doing because I prefer that extra bit of stability and I'm going to pretty much keep my camera in the cage. So let's screw this straight in. Bam. All right. So now the camera is in the cage. I'm going to now attach our little 15 millimeter rail block and to do so, this takes Manfrotto plates. They actually include one, but I like to use my own since I put this directly on a gimbal. Oh, by the way, Condor Blue sends you one of these little bottle openers um, things, which I just, I keep all my keys and I'm, I use it all the time. So I absolutely love that. Tightening down quarter, 20s and whatnot. So now that's attached. So this can go on a gimbal and this is pretty much how I keep the camera when it's not in the cage. Now we can attach our 15 millimeter rail block. So as you see, it says lens right there. So I'm going to just push down on the safety pin, slide it in and tighten it down. So 15 millimeter rail blocks are in. Let's put in the rails. So these are the little, I believe these are eight inch rails. And these just slide in. This is the V-mount plate. So now we slide that in right here. And now we tighten down the plate. What I really like about this top handle is not only does this feel great, um, there's actually a little record button. So we can press and stop recording from the top handle, which is great for low angles. So I'm um, going to put that on right here. All right, now let's attach our monitor. To do that, I have this monitor mount from Small Rig that I picked up uh, probably a few months ago. And the reason I like this is it has the RE locating pins, which fits right here on our top handle. Um, I much prefer this because it is just a rock solid connection. Most monitor mounts that I use slipped and that's the last thing you want to deal with when you're shooting. But yeah, now we can attach our Ninja 5 monitor. I threw on the dummy battery on the back, so we are powering it through the V-mount on the back. Reason I like to do this is this thing is really power hungry because it's a recorder, it got fans built in. I like having a lighter weight setup. That way I can adjust the monitor on the fly. And you can always adjust the tension of this, but I have it set up just right, so. I can adjust it pretty simply, but it stays put, which is what we all need. Side handle I got, this is by Nicey Rig. They sent me this um, a while back and I just really like having this as a secondary option. And here's pretty much the setup without any wires connected um, or a battery. So let's do that right now. 
This is the Power Extra 190 watt hour battery. Pretty cheap on Amazon and it's been working fine just for me. This has DTAP and USB on the sides here. So what we're gonna do is grab our Condor Blue cable. This goes from DTAP to our monitor. Plug that in. So now this will receive power. And next thing I'm gonna do is attach power to the camera. Now I actually have a DTAP, but I actually found what I prefer is having the built-in battery on the A7S III and just powering it through the USB um, because it provides two things. Number one, anytime that the battery gets cut off, maybe you drop a V-mount or it dies all of a sudden, you're still running off the internal battery, so you have plenty. I like having that, and also with a gimbal, I can take this off um, and only need to unplug this rather than swapping out a battery. And then I got an extra long uh, USB-C cable, so I just took a little bread tie. You could buy a shorter one, but um, this is working fine just for me. Next thing we're gonna do, Let's plug in our HDMI cable. And this one is a great little thin HDMI cable. It allows for ProRes RAW recording. And the best part is it costs eight bucks, which um, Atomos, their offering is like 80, 70 bucks. Um, no reason to get that um, when these things exist. So I'm just gonna wrap it around. Last thing, well, almost last, we have our um, little remote port. So this goes in right here on the side. Plug that in, and this goes into the remote port. A few other things I'm going to add, I'm gonna add a little small rig cold shoe onto this side. And I do this just so I can add my XLR adapter. So this is the XLR K3M. Um, Super expensive, like 600 bucks for XLRs, but that means you can, again, have everything powered off of one battery since it goes off the camera. Great thing about this is it has a hot shoe relocator. So I attach one end onto the camera's hot shoe and I can fit this right on top of the cold shoe we just placed, lock it down, put this on, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have XLRs going straight into the camera, and this everything is feeding off one battery, which is amazing. Anytime I want to make sure my camera's charging, I can always press this button so the internal battery is remaining charged. Anytime that like battery cuts out, my camera's still on. So um, yeah, that's that's good. You don't want to deal with corrupted files or anything like that. Media that I'm recording to are the Silicon Power SD cards. I have a full video on these. Um, these are great V90 cards, so I have almost every single recording mode I would ever need. Um, yeah, and they're like 50 bucks, so great. Uh, we're also going to attach a ND filter because that's the last thing we're gonna need to fully complete this. We got our stability, we got our power, we need NDs. So this is a really cool ND filter from the folks over at Freewell. Um, I'm gonna have a review coming out on this shortly. This is their new ND Mist. It's a variable ND filter. This goes from two to five stops, but the cool thing is, is they're hard stops. And this just screws on to the front and they have a magnetic cap. That just snaps on like so. And that is it. We can turn on our camera, we can turn on our monitor, Give that some time to boot up, but yeah, we essentially have everything we possibly need. XLRs, ND filters, big, big battery life, so. And if you ever just need to charge this, you can always do so with a D-tap on the back. So you could just put this on your counter, slap that um, battery on charger, and that keeps everything up and ready. So that is it for the assembly of the camera cage. Let's take it outside and show you how I use this and what effects you get with a cage like this. So this is obviously much heavier than a traditional mirrorless camera, but is a little bit lighter than a cinema camera, I would say, um, but it's a good amount of weight where it feels balanced and you're not like prone to shaking all the time. So it feels very nice in the hand. Again, two handles gripped and I can kind of tuck in the battery right against my shoulder. 
so I have three points of contact, which feels really stable. And I can, of course, see my monitor adjust things. And um, I actually don't need to take my hand off to support the lens if I want to change focus because we're using autofocus. That's right. Um, so this is great. So you get super stable and you're autofocusing all the way. Um, if you need to change your autofocus points, you can, of course, touch right here on the back. You still have access to that. So it's, uh, yeah, you can change your autofocus points. So this is kind of a setup I would typically shoot with and I can just slide back and forth, do some cool movements. If you want to get a higher angle, you can grab the top of the top handle like so, push this on your shoulder and you can kind of see the top monitor still just right up there. So if you do need to get higher angles, this is great for you. I'm six foot tall, so most of the time I'm shooting right here. From there, if I want to get lower angles, I can tilt my monitor, grab the top handle, and I can either support the bottom of the plates, the whole camera like this, or I can just hold the handle like so. And again, for super low angles, I mean, I can just basically hold it by the top handle and it feels super steady. So if you're really concerned about stability, of course, with the A7S III, you have that in-body image stabilization and you can even turn on active image stabilization if you're really wanting stable footage, which is just amazing. So here I have set up um, and I, I really like this handle right here. I have access to my aperture, my ISO, my shutter, because my hand is still on the grip itself. So let's just show you what this looks like right here. So I'm gonna press record, and this is standard stabilization. And it's pretty stable. And if I wanna do some movements, bend the knees a little bit, do some movements. This is really, this is much more stable than I can get with an FS7. Um, the lens is not even stabilized. You could warp stabilize, stabilize that if you want in post. I'm gonna throw it onto active stabilization. And it crops in just a little bit, but you, <laughs> Well, let me hold my breath there. So smooth. Of course, it's not a slider, it's not a gimbal, but it's still an organic movement, which is just really awesome. And of course, warp stabilize that if you want. So you really have a super stable setup. This is one of the many reasons why I like shooting with this A7S III cage. Again, if you're tired of shaky, jittery handheld footage, consider adding some weight just to get you more stable and just really helps with handheld. And the best way to do that is by adding a V-mount battery. That way you can power your camera and your accessories. So I wanna give thanks to Condor Blue for sending out some of these accessories for review. I really appreciate it and I'm happily filming some handheld footage with my A7S III. If you guys have any thoughts or maybe ways you would change this to fit your setup, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.